Hi guys, and welcome back. It's time to implement our network policy resource. All right, so let's head over to the Kubernetes documentation. And what I typically like to do when I am creating a network policy manifest file is copy the example that is available under the Kubernetes documentation under concepts, services, load balancing, and networking. And then if you scroll down to the network policies documentation, this is kind of what talks about conceptually how network policies work, but they do include an example of the network policy resource. And then what you can do is just kind of trim out the parts of it that you don't want at any point in time. So let's copy that from here. And I'm gonna fire up Microsoft Visual Studio Code here, and I'll just paste that in. And I'll just change our language mode here to YAML so we get the proper syntax highlighting for this document. All right, so now that we've got this example here, let's go through what the different options are in the schema for a network policy resource. So we need to set a name for the network policy, and that's under the metadata field right here. So we're going to change the name from test network policy to MySQL server dash inbound. Of course, you could use whatever name you would like to, but I'm just going to call it MySQL server inbound since we are going to be accepting inbound traffic on TCP 3306 from other pods within the cluster. We also have the option to specify the namespace here. Of course, you can do the namespace option when you do a kubectl apply, but sometimes it's nice to just embed that in the manifest in the event that you accidentally forget to specify the namespace option as you saw me do in earlier videos. So let's change our namespace just to net policy. And then down here under our spec, this is where we can configure the pod selector for the pods that we want this particular policy to apply to. Now the policy itself is going to be applied to our MySQL server pod right over here. So the label that we want to use to apply the network policy resource is purpose equals DB server not DB client, because we don't want the policy to apply to the client pods. We want the policy to apply to the pod where the inbound traffic is destined for. So let's go ahead and grab this label pair here and come back to our VS Code window. And we'll go ahead and just paste that in and just change the equal sign to a colon for proper YAML syntax. All right, so now that we've got that pod selector with the match labels set correctly, now we can take a look at the policy types here. And in this particular case, we are not worried about egress traffic. We only are going to have a rule for ingress traffic. And again, this is not in the ingress resource in a Kubernetes cluster. This is ingress network traffic that is being ingressed to our MySQL server pod. So I'm going to eliminate the egress option from policy types here because we are actually going to also remove entirely the egress section from the network policy because we are not controlling egress traffic with this particular policy. So that leaves us just with one last section here, which is our ingress section. Now the ingress section, as you can see, is an array as indicated by the dash here that indicates that we have basically a one rule right here, one ingress rule. And we could optionally add multiple rules, but for the time being, let's just take a look at a single rule. So the rule has a from property right here, and the from property determines the source of the network traffic. So if you think back to our diagram right here, the source of our network traffic is going to be one of our client pods, in this case, our pod that we called MySQL client, and that's going to serve as the source making outbound connections to our database server on TCP 3306. So what we want to do is grab the pod selector down here under the from section. And it looks very similar to the pod selector up here at the root of the spec for the network policy. But when you're looking at the ingress rule here, you're actually selecting the pods that allow inbound access to the server pod. So in this case, we're going to be using the purpose and setting purpose to, uh, what is it, DB client, I think. And that is going to serve as the selector label. So only pods that have purpose equals DB client are going to allow traffic to 3306. And of course, we can eliminate the namespace selector here as well. 
and the IP block because at the moment we're just going to be using the label selection here. Down under the ports section here, we need to specify which port we want to control traffic to, and of course that is port 3306 on our MySQL server pod. All right, so this is kind of what we've whittled down successfully in order to define a network policy. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this to my clipboard here. Come back to my PowerShell window, and we'll create a here string, and I'll just paste that in here. And we're going to take this and pipe it into kubectl apply dash dash file name and then a dash. And when you do apply dash dash file name with a dash as the file name, that is going to take the input here that we're piping into the kubectl command as the actual file contents. So that way we don't have to worry about saving the actual YAML file to the file system. We can basically just pass it directly in line right here. All right, so now we've got a network policy resource created inside of our net policy namespace that we defined right here in the Kubernetes manifest. So let's confirm that. Let's do a kubectl get all. And what you're going to see is that when we run get all, the network policy resource type is not actually returned by default. So you might actually run that command and be kind of confused and think, oh no, you know, it didn't, it didn't correctly create my network policy, or maybe I put it in the wrong namespace or something like that. Well, no, that's not actually the case. It is in the correct namespace because we defined that right up here in the manifest. But what we need to do is run kubectl get network policy and be a little bit more explicit about the resource type that we want to retrieve. So sure enough, you can see that we have this network policy resource right here. We could also do a more detailed describe operation on that network policy resource. And you'll see it has the pod selector here set to purpose equals DB server, allowing inbound to 3306. And the pod selector for the client side is purpose equals DB client. So let's switch back to our other tab here where we have our MySQL client. And we're still connected here, it looks like. And I can run the status command here. And in order to initiate a new connection, just to kind of prove that this is actually working, I'll actually specify my password inline right here by using equals and then the password. And then I'll also do dash dash execute to run a command like status. And as you can see, I can just run that command repeatedly. And I have inbound access to the MySQL server pod. So that's acting just as we expected, right? We set everything up properly and that network traffic is allowed. However, what would happen if we spun up another pod and it did not have the correct label associated with it like our client pod has right here? Well, we're going to test that out in the next video. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.